Hello and welcome. This is a great honor to have Alexis Richardson with us today. He's the CEO and co-founder of WeaveWorks and the former chairman of the TOC for the CNCF. Alexis, of course, is well known in the industry, having previously been with Pivotal and with RabbitMQ, both of which were eventually acquired by VMware. So a well-known reference in the industry here. And it's great to talk to you today. Welcome, Alexis. Hey. Thank you. Hey. Great to have you on. And I guess, Alexis, uh, you know, we wanted to talk to you following our investment in WeaveWorks in the Series C you closed in November. Great to be part of the team here and, and great to see how you are uh, getting on and deploying the uh, Kubernetes management platform in more and more enterprises here. This is really seeming a game changer. Give us some background on what inspired you to create that platform and, and build WeaveWorks as a company. We created WeaveWorks because we want it to be really easy for developers to build cloud applications. And we could see that containers is how that would happen. But there were so many pieces missing. We've spent five years building out the stack that you need in order to make it easy to develop and operate applications in the cloud. Absolutely. And I think we, we can really underline this. The telcos are now really embracing that cloud native wave of modern software architecture as well. Uh, even though this is really complex for them, you, you see it in the way that uh, we are now slowly going into the first deployments, be it on the access network disaggregation, where we had the first go live for Deutsche Telekom of a disaggregated uh, architecture where hardware and software were really separated. And also, of course, now the challenge becomes for Deutsche Telekom how to run those uh, cloud native environments. And that's, I think, where WeaveWorks fits in very well. But how, where do you see the challenges in the adoption of Kubernetes on those cloud native technologies in, in, in the telco context? Well, first of all, telcos are not very different from other companies in many respects. And we see the same challenges for telco as we do with other large enterprise businesses. Um, most software at enterprises has been around for a long time, sometimes hasn't been changed for a long time. And people ask, well, you know, if it isn't broken, why would you change it? Why would you fix it? And so the business is saying, well, we want to go faster. We want new services for customers, digital experiences in the cloud, make it work with the old stuff. And so one of the biggest challenges with enterprise is to bring the new world and the old world together productively. You can't be one of these, you know, bright eyed people who says, oh, just do the new stuff, forget about the old, because in an enterprise environment, it's just not realistic. Secondly, security regulation. Every company has this. Sometimes, uh, for example, in Germany, many things are highly regulated. There's a lot of data protection for people, which I think is a good thing. If you go to the US, financial sector has lots and lots of regulations going back to you know, 1900 to protect them from you know, the corruption they've experienced over again and again with market collapses and things. And so, um, you know, if you're helping them, you need a way to enable productivity, but you must also make sure that the checks, the regulatory checks and security checks are built in to your solution. So you can go faster, you can automate, but you can be protected. And we see sure. that in telco as well. But now telco also has new, new problems because of 5G, of course. Yeah, and I think also with telco, of course, you you, you always run into this problem of uh, what we call the telco grade standard, right? This is part of the critical infrastructure in most countries. And so you cannot risk to have the odd outages. Uh, this would be an unforgiving moment for most telcos. So really, when you adopt Kubernetes platforms, you still have to maintain the same stability of the network. And as you say, with 5G, this is now getting all the more urgent because we obviously face very different challenges now having to build out the, uh, the radio access networks for this whole new standard. So, Alexis, how do you see the impact of 5G rollout on your business and on cloud native deployments? How is it going to challenge your organization as well? So, first of all, I would say that 5G is really exciting. I think it represents a new platform coming into the internet. Um, maybe it won't be exactly 5G, maybe it will be the next five and a half G or something, but something is definitely changing for real now because we have the ability to connect um, fabric 
uh, network fabric uh, around houses, high streets, cars, planes, trains, with the backbone of the internet, data centers and the cloud, into one unified uh, network for delivering applications, which means that we can have customer experiences that we can send anywhere we want to, uh, with the same economics and simplicity of management as our cloud services. So this is going to be really fantastic. For, the, for our business, uh, we are a startup. We're backed by some great investors. But the challenge, of course, is to meet the right needs. You know, we want to work with bigger companies, bigger partners, rather than being uh, trying to do everything at once. So our, our biggest challenge is making sure that we stay focused on the areas where we can have the biggest impact on our, on our customers and partners. Yeah. And I, I think that fits very well with the investment thesis that we had behind WeaveWorks, because ultimately you're addressing exactly those converging trends that we see in the telco industry here. As we said, telcos are modernizing their architecture here. They are moving towards these uh, modern cloud-ready deployments. At the same time, we are moving now from architecture modernization to real operations. And that's really the next frontier for telcos here. How can they really not just create modern architectures, but really run them, run them more efficiently, run them at higher density now with the 5G rollout. And that's, I think, where WeaveWorks really comes in. And that's sort of where we first obviously came across also your proposition, because we see your JitOps model really as a key framework to achieve that level of automation and consistency across all of the workloads and platforms that telcos have to operate. And, and I think here you're very well positioned. And let's say you should keep focus on that for sure, because there's lots of business to be had here. Um, yeah, so maybe for for our uh, listeners, it would be worth if you could just go a little bit into the JitOps operational concept and, and how you approach that also in the enterprise context. Thanks, thanks Till, for asking about GitOps. Uh, it is indeed the core of our technology. Uh, we believe that it is exactly how we're going to solve the IG deployment and management of problems. Imagine lots of telco towers all running mini data centers running containers how do we manage that with GitOps, we have a remote management solution that can scale what we do is we control everything that's running from git repositories that are held centrally then we distribute those out as far as they will go into the edge this means the edge always has an image of its correct state and it can always be in the correct state and if it's not in the correct state we get alerted this means we can automate management. We don't have to have people or manual intervention to manage tens of thousands of telco towers in software. As this is a digital re revolution, a whole digital revolution in software itself, which is powered by containers and GitOps. Very exciting. Absolutely, very exciting times indeed. Alexis, I think we covered a lot of uh, topics in a short amount of time. What's the best way for viewers to, who want to explore those topics further to get in touch with you? How can they engage with you? With me personally, I would welcome emails from viewers. My email is alexis at weave.works. You can also see me on Twitter as monadic. Sometimes I will be complaining about Brexit, but mostly talking about work. And I'll gladly like all of your Brexit morning posts for sure. Thank <laughs> Thanks a lot, Alexis. And Thank you for all for watching and listening. Bye-bye.